We are at Yankee Stadium of the Bronx, where three weeks from now, December 29th, Virginia Tech and Maryland will clash in the 2021 New Era Pinstripe Bowl. Thanks, Dustin, and thanks to uh, you, Michael, and, and everyone for coming on to uh, the Zoom. Um, as Dustin stated, uh, we, we're finishing up what we call our first cycle of a, of a game week. Today would be a Thursday practice for us. Uh, and then our players will have the next couple of days off to be with their families prior to uh, restarting up on Christmas Eve and uh, starting a second um, five practice cycle, which leads up to the game on the 29th. Uh, they, these practices have been so beneficial for our, uh, for our team. Um, the, the ability to develop our young players while also, you know, as I talked about, uh, you know, going back and really hitting the basics uh, with the veteran players. You know, some of the things that tend to happen uh, during the season is you become very scheme oriented uh, in an effort to, to, to put your players in the best possible position to be successful. And sometimes fundamentals are the things that kind of uh, don't get uh, don't get necessarily uh, worked on as as being extra important. So what we tried to do here. Uh, the last nine opportunities that we've had to practice, some being player run, but at least the last seven that we've been out there as a, a team with our coaches is really go back to developing our fundamentals individually of our players, because we do believe if you get better individually from a fundamental standpoint, uh, collectively we'll be better as a team. And, and you know, for us to have success uh, up in New York against a, a, a great opponent like Virginia Tech, we're going to need to be very fundamentally sound as a program. And so we've really done that. And then that led into, you know, the last four practices being all about our Virginia Tech prep. And, and we've had some good work. Our players have uh, brought the same type of work ethic, energy and standard that we've set for what it takes to be successful. And I've been really happy with the leadership we've gotten from our veteran players. But also uh, it's been nice to see some of the younger players in our program uh, which leads us to believe that our future is really bright around here. So um, with that, I'll open it up to questions. Call Superior Tours for your trip to the Pinstripe Bowl to see the Terps on December 29th. Network solutions, managed IT, and technical support. Viner Forgates makes your company work. Solutions to protect your business from WatchGuard, including firewalls and endpoint protection. Protect your company and make your company work with solutions from Viner Forgates. Coach, good to see you. Um, two, this is a two part for me. The first is how concerning is this trend we're seeing just across sports about rising COVID cases? How has that sort of affected your approach in these past few practices? Yeah, you know, the best thing for us is, again, one, uh, we did a lot of the work beforehand. Um, our player, you know, we were like 90 percent totally vaccinated with our players. Uh, we recently had, I want to say, 55 other uh players take, take the booster shot here in the last few days. Um, our medical staff has done a great job of being at the forefront of, you know, making sure that we're doing the work beforehand and not being reactive. And so, but as with anything, I mean, COVID is a day-to-day -day battle that we face. Uh, we continue to stress the importance of player safety first and doing all the things we can to kind of help uh, curtail it or, or at least, you know, do our part to, to at least slow it down here within our football family. But, you know, really proud that our players have taken the necessary steps on the front end that has allowed us to kind of continue to try to go about business as usual uh, with our preparation. And then the medical staff that we have here really has done a great job of leading the, the way for us to to be able to get through through another round of, uh, of these COVID, uh, this COVID cases increase. And the second part to the question that I had, um, going back to the developmental side of things, you highlighted that your recent practices are Virginia Tech focused. How much have those developmental practices helped you prepare for Virginia Tech? Well, I think one, they've really helped because, uh, you know, with the players that have really played significant um, roles in us getting to this point, um, it allows us to really go back and resharpen some of the skill necessary for the scheme to work. But I think probably the best part for us has been being able to evaluate, look at it, and see 
uh, some of these younger players that maybe haven't gotten as many opportunities and, and not, you know, for us, you know, as I told a bunch of these guys, we've left enough kind of meat on the bone and that if we need to utilize some of these young players in this game, we will. And we now have the confidence because of what we've been able to get accomplished here, uh, you know, during these bowl practices that there are some of these young players that I think will play a significant role uh, in, 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 the, in the upcoming game against Virginia Tech. We'll go to uh, Lauren Rosh. Hi, Coach. Um, you were talking. Hello. You were talking about these younger players. Are there any in particular who you're really seeing benefit from these practices? Some of them, maybe, who are stepping into new roles with this extra time. Yeah, I mean, I would have to. You know, it's a long list. So I've been really happy with the young running backs. You know, like I said, guys like Roman Hemby and Antoine Littleton have really stood out and, and jumped out to me. Uh, some of the younger defensive uh, interior players, uh, Andre Porter, Taze Johnson, who's played some for us. Uh, you know, I've been really impressed with, you know, Corey Coley continuing his development uh, on the back end stuff. Um, so, you know, Ty, Ty Felton, you know, Ty kind of played some for us and missed the last few games. These extra days and weeks of practice have really helped, uh, you know, him continue to develop and come along. So uh, as a whole, you know, because I don't like leaving any of these young players out of there, uh, they all have really been benefited from it. And I've been really pleased with the development of, of these young guys. And, and like I said, whether it's special teams roles uh, or roles within the offense or defensive system, um, we feel very confident that we'll have some of these guys be able to contribute. We'll go to Wayne Viner. Coach, uh, of course, the story about the young guys is great. It must make you feel like you've really gotten to a milestone when all of these players who could have moved on, including Johari Branch, who saw a tweet from him today, have decided to stay. What kind of bump does it give the program when the guys that you've invested in decide to take one more year with you? Well, I mean, again, I think, you know, obviously with the transfer portal and what it has brought to college football. And, you know, I know there was some angst amongst our, our fan base when, when we lose players. Uh, but as I've said from day one, you know, the transfer portal is a good thing for both players and coaches uh, because obviously, you know, when you lose players, uh, it opens up opportunities. And, you know, for us to have veteran players like Dante Demas declare to come back and Jahari Branch, and, and there'll be a few more here as the, as we get into the bowl game where you'll see some guys make decisions uh, to return for that extra year. You know, I think it sends the right message that, you know, we're doing things the right way within our program. Uh, as I've said from day one, you know, the best recruiting job you can do is recruiting the talent within your program first and foremost, because of the transfer portal, because of immediate eligibility. And we've tried to do a, a great job as a program and as a football family of providing a tremendous amount of resources to where our players want to be here and they feel that when they leave here they're leaving a better version of themselves and so it's great because most of these guys have been really big contributors over the last couple of years and just looking at maybe the impact that that extra year had on a, a Sam Okuwanu uh, to me kind of leads me to believe that having some of these veteran starters return next year will be very very beneficial to the continued development of our program. Wayne, did you have a follow-up or your hand function was just left up? Sorry, just had my hand up. All good. No follow-up, thank you. <laughs> okay. Any other uh, questions here for Coach? Um, we'll go to David Barnes with CTV. Yeah, thank you. Coach, uh, you've talked about how this uh, extra week of practice has been good for you to kind of go back and reestablish some fundamentals. Where uh, do you think you've seen the most improvement in that? What have you really had a chance to look at and, and work on? I mean, it's, it's a, a, as a whole, I mean, to say like each individual player had what we call their own prescription. Um, and so what I would say is my comment to the question would be, is that I've seen us put together practice plans and I've seen our players show up and, and deliberately uh, work to get better at the specific things that we individually said each player needed to improve upon. Um, you know, this wasn't a cookie cutter deal where 
we want to improve on these three things. Uh, I had goals for us as a, a total program, uh, meaning I wanted to see uh, each player's prescription be prescribed and then worked on, which we've been able to accomplish. Uh, I wanted to be able to put together a, a great game plan and give us basically two cycles to run through our uh, game plan for Virginia Tech, and, and we've been able to accomplish that. And then the last but not least, I wanted to be able to develop our young players uh, through these practices where we've had a scrimmage or two with these guys while also being able to evaluate them to see how they would be able to contribute in this game if, if needed. And, you know, I feel good about meeting, uh, reaching those three goals as a program, but the things that each individual player, I feel really comfortable that uh, each player really showed up these last practices uh, to work on those specific prescriptions that we wrote uh, for each one of those guys to be a better individual football player. David, you had a follow-up? Yes, thanks. Um, you talked about last week talking to Coach Freegen and uh, the previous coach from the Prince Pinstripe Bowl, name escapes me. But also throughout the season, you had players come and talk to the team. So I'm wondering if you've got uh, any former players that you want to have come out, talk to your guys, and, or whether you've sort of pointed some of your players to former Terps that, that they can talk to about playing in big games like this. I mean, we always provide different resources to our players. Um, you know, we've had a ton of people come uh, watch these bowl practices. Um, we, we did have, you know, Dr. Elko come in and talk to our team. We're always uh, trying to bring in resources and people uh, to reinforce some of the things that we have set within our program. But, I mean, you know, it was great having, you know, Tory Smith came and spent a couple of days. I know Tory's contemplating getting into the coaching a business, whether it's at the high school level, he spent some time shadowing kind of me for two days. Uh, we've had Josh Wilson, a former Terp, come spend some time here, but uh, we haven't necessarily, you know, asked our players to reach out uh, to anybody. We feel like we have enough experience uh, within our program um, in terms of uh, what it takes to prepare a team uh, for a bowl game that, that we can get those things accomplished. But uh, we're also not shy about our former players uh, being active participants and helping this program develop. And we've had a ton of those guys really uh, buy into to what we're trying to get accomplished here. And it's been great having former Terps back in the fold. We'll go to Ryan McFadden with the Baltimore Sun. Hey, Coach, how's it going? What's up, Ryan? Uh, my question for you is, is how uh, with uh, Virginia Tech Star um, the pro for tech with that for the Penn Stride Bowl. Yeah, that question was sounded like Charlie Brown school teacher, Ryan. My, yeah, my connection. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I think we got you better. Now. All right, my bad. It's my connection. Sorry, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, my question is with um, Virginia Tech star and QB uh, hitting the transfer portal. Uh, before the um, the game, I think was has been the approach for the team preparing for Virginia Tech on the defensive end. Yeah, you've covered me long enough to know that that, that answer is going to be more about uh, it's about us, not more uh, not about them. Obviously, we game plan uh, the personnel they have, and you know if you looked at what they've done, they've played multiple quarterbacks uh, throughout the year, um, and so they still have two guys that are threats um, at the quarterback position. Um, but for us, it's, it's more about making sure we've got our, our house straight, that we've gotten uh, the game plans that we're implementing to, uh, to stop whoever the quarterback is, to stop the plays that we've been able to evaluate on tape that they like to run. And so, you know, yeah, we've, we've, we keep, we've kept up with guys that, that are playing and, and we prepare obviously based on the strengths of what that position is, but like I said, they've played multiple quarterbacks all year long. And so, um, you know, I don't know how much it affects what we do in game planning, um, but we feel like they still have a couple of guys back there playing quarterback that will that'll, that we'll have to defend. Next, we'll go to Olivia Garvey with PBC7. Hey, Coach, how's it going? What's up, Olivia? <laughs> um I mean, what's your message to this team ahead of this big game? Does it stay the same, something that you've told them all season, or, or are you tweaking it a little bit? 
No, we're, we're pretty consistent from a messaging standpoint. Um, it's the most important game because it's our next. Um, I do think the difference for us was that, you know, how we view this game, you know, for probably most of our fan base, they see this as the end of the 21 season. But for us, uh, we see it at the start of our 22 season. Um, and, and our approach for games, you know, don't change based on the opponent. Like we don't have a big game because of this opponent. And then, you know, a game against another opponent is a lesser game. So uh, we try to keep consistent with kind of our approach and, and how we go about preparing for the next opponent. And so I think, you know, for us, that's that's always been consistent with who we are, how we prepare and what we do. And, you know, this one, we've just had a little more time to prepare for, which has given us the opportunity, like I said, to sharpen our tools um, <clears throat> fundamentally for each and every player, um, you know, as we wrote these prescriptions. And now, again, all of our energy and effort is toward the game plan and making sure that we have that thing down pat as we go into, you know, you know leaving here on Christmas Day to head to New York. Great, Coach. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, we'll go to uh, Ahmed. Did you still have a question? Uh, yeah, uh, just a quick question. Um, Coach, I know you, you just mentioned uh, it's more about what you guys do rather than what Virginia Tech does. Um, and I know kind of leading up to, to bowl preparation, you mentioned just how critical these – practices are so I'm curious now that you know week out from the game what have you seen from your team that maybe you feel most maybe proud of that they've taken that next step or maybe most confident in you know I think the big thing is just the, the approach they've taken to these practices because you know you can get to this point in your season where all of a sudden things become mundane meaning you just kind of aimlessly go through the process of practicing and you know these guys have been dealing with taking final exams uh, obviously dealing with the COVID situation and around them and having to kind of rethink how they live again because of COVID. But every time we stepped on the field to practice, I felt the, I feel the energy level was where we wanted to be. I feel that they've approached it with what I call a deliberate mindset that I'm, I want to get better at these couple of things. And to me, that's what makes practices, uh, be, be, be the left to the level that we want them because you don't want to go through where you just kind of put it on neutral or, or, or put it on cruise control and, and go through the motions, which can happen, you know, when you get into these type of practices where, you know, the game is three weeks away and we're out practicing. I think the mental approach of how our players looked at these practices are right in line, right in alignment with how I visualize them to be where they, they got better. Uh, we got better fundamentally individually, and that means hopefully we'll be better collectively, you know, when we go out on the field on the 29th.